Hello everyone, welcome to week 13 of the weekly race guide here in Gran Turismo and we are at Autopolis Short for this first race. Let's have a look at the race details first of all. We are racing five laps here at Autopolis Short. It's a good start but you do not need traction control. Sports soft tyres and everything else is as standard. Of course you are supplied the car and the car in question is the Yaris. Yes, we have our sponsored race once again here in Gran Turismo. Lots of body roll, quite controllable, I suppose, in terms of the car. It's all about being patient with the throttle. And third and fourth gear are your best friends. Let's jump to the race then. I'll talk you through some tips, tricks, a funny lap one, and also a lap guide to boot. Here we are then at the start of the grid. And if you notice something, everybody is either black or white. And then you have one pleb at the back who is red. And we have had a couple of disconnects. Disconnects, weirdly, a big feature of this weekly race guide, as you'll find out soon. So here we are at the start of the grid then. As I say, you do not need trash control. And uh, I mean, trash control maybe a tiny bit quicker, but nothing major. The, the tiniest bit of wheel spin. So you notice there's a tiny bit of time, but nothing major. I prefer... Uh, and certainly I recommend you guys not putting it on, just flat out off you go. You don't have to worry about turning it off and on. Head towards turn one then. I'll tell you what we say, stay on the inside because of this reason up ahead. Pure car. <laughs> I don't know how many places we gained there. Four places, happy days, we'll gain those positions. Uh, and unfortunately the German ahead gets a three second penalty as well. They actually do a really nice thing here and back out, which is... Very nice of them. They did apologise after the race as well, so I'm assuming they were involved in that first corner incident. It all happened in a bit of a blur to me personally, so uh, yes, we continue on. So I run a little bit wide here, and uh, I'm just trying to bring it back together. And you saw that right at the start of the TV clip when we were just talking about the race details. But uh, three we go here, and uh, yeah, we're going to continue on racing. As you see, there's lots of body roll, but the car is it's weird. Body, lots of body roll, but the car remains quite stable, so it's all about patience. Uh, and that's what I'm trying to do here. So what we're going to do quite quickly is advance a bit further on and straight into a lap guide onto lap number two. So head towards turn one. What you're going to look for here on the left-hand side is 100 meter board or the orange uh, bit on the barrier. I make it a little bit earlier here because of slipstream. Look for either of these two markers. They are very helpful for you. Uh, and that's what I use. We're ignoring white van man today. Uh, third gear for turn one. So right through that corner. And as I say, third and fourth gear are your best friends. So the only gears you need at this circuit um, no, and fifth gear down the straight, of course, but uh, we're going to continue towards turn two then. Now, uh, as we head towards turn two, you, get, you notice the orange dab on the uh, barrier there, the orange painting or paint. Uh, you can also use the tarmac, which I often use here. It's m more my preference, but both those in the exact same place. Drop to third gear, of course, uh, and this is all about bouncing the car through here. So, you know, just on and off the throttle, 50% or so if you can. You notice there, we're just dropping down, just bouncing the car. And on the right side, we are using white van man this time. Use that on the right side and make sure you're straight for the braking. Now, you can do this in third gear. I did notice some people using second gear. Now, I use third gear just because I don't have to worry about the gear change. There's a delay when shifting in this car. Um, third gear, it bogs down a tiny bit, but then it's fine. So it sort of counteracts the delay in the shift. Now, as you head enter this fast left-hander, it's all about lifting. So I lift about halfway through the corner, exactly where the cone is, really. I lift, but I'm staying in third gear initially. And then when I'm happy, I'll change to fourth gear. Uh, and the reason I do that is that I don't want the issue of the weight transfer with a gear shift through the corner. Now, when you see the master box about center in your screen, you can then go flat out, really. You should be able to make the corner at that point. Use that as a bit of a guide or a reference in terms of accelerating out of that corner. And as you see there, we lose nothing then to the leaders in that fourth gear, just shifting mid-corner, uh, mid but just nice and easy. So towards the last corner, I'm using the arrow on the left-hand side. I'm breaking just before it here, just a bit of slipstream in there as well. But uh, use that as your marker there. Obviously, if you struggle with brakes, you might have to break a little bit early. If you're absolutely a giant on the brakes or an alien on the brakes, it's probably a better word, then you can obviously break a little bit later than I am doing as well. Let's fast forward a little bit then. Let's uh, get up some more racing action here. So I hint towards turn one. The Frenchman goes a little bit deep there, as does the Italian right in front of us. So the Frenchman going to lose a position. Uh, and we're going to have a look at the Italian now as they go defensive on the inside. Uh, we're going to go try and run the outside. No, we're just going to back out of it for now. I'm always cautious about going on the outside in any daily race. If I don't know the driver, I'm really cautious about it. Looking for a bit of a cutback here, but unfortunately the Italian is there, so I can't do much with that. In towards the braking zone, and it's staying status quo for now. As uh, through there we go. It's a nice little race so far. I mean, you can have some good races here, I suspect. Um, you know, it's all about learning the car more than anything. 
So we advance a bit further on here, and we're right behind the Italians. I wanted him to go on to the inside. I wanted to force a mistake here. And as you see, they broke a little bit late here, and uh, they managed to stop the car, but we go, okay, this is exactly what we wanted. And the way I do that is I just show my nose a little bit. If you show your nose a little bit to somebody, more than likely, they're going to think you're going to go for the dive. And that's what I do here. Unfortunately, the French driver up ahead breaks quite early, uh, so we have to really slow up, and that gives the Italian the run around the outside here, uh, and they're going to keep that position. A couple of little taps here. Now, initially, I was like, oh, come on. But then looking back at it, it was nothing. And, uh, you know, it's one thing where you just look back and... and, and Assess the situation after it happens and make sure were you right, were you wrong with your opinion in that situation, I was wrong. But I was flashing my lights at the time. So we head on to lap number five then. And again, this is what I do to try and get someone to go towards the inside. Just show my nose. It doesn't fall for it this time. However, looks to make the move on the French driver. French driver sort of moves under braking a little bit there. So I'm not sure really who's at fault. Do let me know in the chat uh, and in the comments as well. Who do you think at fault there? Was there anybody at fault racing incident? I don't know. Uh, but we do capitalise on that as we head towards the last corner now. Um, and I did notice the Italian was breaking quite late anyway. Um, so I was expecting something like this to happen, and it did. So we take the inside, and we claim that third position. How about that? Happy days. P3, race A. It's a fairly good racing, a bit of a funny turn one. But I tell you what, this race is not as funny because the next race is absolutely hilarious and we're at the Nürburgring for this absolutely hilarious race now I've purposely hidden why it was hilarious because you'll find out shortly why it was hilarious let's have a look at race details first of all we're racing four laps here at the Nürburgring circuit it's a rolling start and we are on racing medium tyres now weirdly and as you can see in the background we're racing in Evo now, the Evo would not be my first choice if I saw this combo come up. It certainly would have been more the FF cars. Uh, I did do a little bit of a comparison versus the FF cars, and the Evo just sticks like glue, which is why it's champion here at the Nürburgring GP circuit. But nice to see that it is strong somewhere. So, I think without further ado, let's relieve this tension, should I say. Let's jump to the funny moments in this race, and then I'll explain why I kept this race in in the first place. Here we are then, as you see. 16 players there. 16. Oh wait, no, no, we're, we're down, we're down to 10 already. As I say, disconnect is a bit of a theme here, but it gets better. It gets so much better. So we've got 10 cars now, and the mixture of Group 4 cars here, and I'll explain why probably some people chose certain cars in a second. Um, but let's now jump to the race start, or what can I say about this, really? Oh wait, we're starting. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. So you see, everyone is absolutely everywhere. I mean, the funniest one is the Persian one on the inside here. P5, P, P it, they, they were the pole sitter. They were in the pits, reversing backwards, and then they got reset here. It's so unfortunate for No Man's Island there. So we're, we're down to eight drivers, and initially I thought, oh, Mark, we're going to have to restart this. But then I actually had some good racing, and I thought, you know what, we'll keep it in. It's a bit of a funny moment, isn't it, really? Uh, and I'll show you the highs and lows of daily racing all the time. So, through here, Kals has a good move on Skurska here. We're looking down the inside. Unfortunately for us, they're going to have a better exit here, so we do have to relinquish this a little bit here. And we do lift off, just falling behind. And let's see what kind of move we can do here. So, they take a tighter line, which means they have a, a more of a wider exit. So, we go down the inside here, looking to try and outbreak them. As you see here, good side-by-side -side action here. Brilliant racing indeed. In towards the right we go. So, we get that position up into P, Steve. Through we go. And, uh, yeah, we continue on. So, the person who got the best advantage with that start was the Jaguar in P1. They were literally facing forwards when it said start. Anyway, we're going to head towards the uh, chicane now. One thing you do have to be careful of is any, if anyone does outbreak themselves. As we're about to see here, unfortunately, uh, Skursko outbreaks themselves there. It was a mistake. You can, quite t you can tell that quite quickly because they give me a bump on exit to try and boost me back up to speed there. Um, so, you know, we all make mistakes. I make them. You make them. Skirsko, unfortunately, in this instance, just made a mistake. Wasn't dirty driving in the slightest. I know some people would think, oh, that's dirty. It's not dirty. You can quite clearly see there they didn't intend that in the slightest. So we continue on racing. And as you see on the radar, they're approaching us now quite quickly. Potentially looking for the move. We've also got the Persia RCZ absolutely flying down the inside of the Evo as well. Uh, but the Persia is going to struggle on exits. Now, the reason why you would probably pick the RCZ, they started in P1. A Lancer is not going to overtake an RCZ on a straight. So as long as you keep it in front, you should be golden down the straight. Snappy days, you keep P1. 
But uh, we're going to advance a bit further on now. We're going to look at Kaz. Kaz cuts the inside there. And what does that get you? It gets you a 0.5 second penalty, which we're about to see here. So just a bit of info there for you. Racing this combo. And we're going to continue on now to the final lap. So you see racing died down quite a lot. Not a lot of cars in this. But I don't think there's going to be that much racing in this anyway, if I'm honest. We're going to head towards turn one on the track guide then. And the Evo can break so late. that I'm looking for the curb. I'm breaking just before the start of the curb here. The Evo can do this. It's, it's mad. Obviously, if you're in a car that has worse brakes, you're going to break a bit further back where the tarmac is. Um, but as we're in the Evo, it's a top car. We're doing the track guide with the Evo. So around here, you're just bouncing the car. A little bit of a dab of the brake. I always do this. You want to try and get the car. Just clip on that curb. And then use quite a lot of the exit. And as you head down here, basically you see all these lines here. You'll notice them as you race this more and more. I use these as my reference. So the end of the lines in this situation, I'm going to break. And I want to make sure I get to the inside of this turn. Because it's very, very grippy on that inside. If you get there, look at that. Instant we touch it, we get pulled round. Nice and easy. Slight lift here just to get round. You can use quite a lot of the exit. You will not get penalised for that. And you're going to head out of here. That's the end of sector one. Nice and easy for you. Going to head towards sector two then, uh, and the uh, basically as the GPD circuit goes off, the one we really want in the game, uh, you're going to use the, basically as that marker there, literally as it goes off, uh, and you're going to drop a uh, gear to third gear. Try and get to the left as quick as you can, and at the end of the red and white curbing, uh, you're also going to brake and then get ready to turn into the right hander. So literally, it's as you go left, you're going right. You will find in some cars a huge shift in weight, so just be careful of that. Uh, not so uh, prevalent or not so obvious in a Group 4 car, but if you're ever in Group 3 cars at this circuit, that's what you will experience. Head down towards the hairpin then. Uh, we're going to use the grid positions on the right hand side there. Very nice, easy brake marker to use. Literally, as it's on the edge of the screen, you notice I've just gone on 100% brakes. Nice and easy. Uh, and we can really brake towards the apex. Uh, we're going to go for the tight line. Sometimes you can do the uh, double apex, obviously the triangle. So point, rotate, and then point again. Uh, but not in the Evo in this situation. Up here, the Schumacher S, flat out. Nothing really to worry about here. So we continue on then towards the left. Now I'm going to break a bit earlier than normal here. Uh, so my marker is actually where the 100 meter board is, basically where the tarmac ends. Um, that's my marker. Uh, I'm breaking a little bit early here just because I had a lot of slipstream there and I was a bit cautious. Obviously, we're only doing four laps here. And uh, you can see we did actually, you know, we see Apex a tiny bit there. A good fight happening up ahead. Now this corner, I break a little bit. It's, it is pure eyesight. I don't really have a marker for it. So unfortunately, I can't really stop it there. There's no marker that I use. It's pure eyesight, pure just feel. Now, as you can see here, Elisura, School Crusher, heading towards the chicane. So we're going to be breaking early here, knowing what's happening up ahead. Uh, you see School Crusher backs out of it a little bit. So I'm using, basically, as the grid goes a little bit bigger, where the 100 meter board is here. Uh, I'm using that as a marker. Just before that, I'm breaking, by the way. Not on it. If you're on it, you'll outbreak yourself. And School Crusher, unfortunately, just hits Elisura there. Um, and we're going to take that position. And you can cut it quite a lot. I'm going to take that position as well. Happy days. We don't go anywhere, though, without a white van man. And that is your last corner marker. Use that wisely. It's absolutely perfect. And uh, yeah, it's what I would use. And uh, in terms of this race then, I think you can have some good fights here. It's why the thumbnail's got a thumbs up. I think because you can have some good fights, it's there. You're just not going to have or be able to race for that long because it's only four laps. Um, so just keep that in mind. You saw some good fights in there. Uh, but that is going to be it for race B. Now we head to quite a common combo, to be honest in race C. Yes, we are at Suzuka then for race C. And as you can see, we're also in group three cars. So I picked the Audi, of course. I picked the Audi. Why wouldn't I do? It was also top of the boards at the time. But I believe that's changed. I think a GTR was top last time I looked um, after the race. But uh, I picked the top one at the time. And as is my beloved Audi. Here we are. Anyway, let's look at the race details first of all. We're racing 10 laps here at Suzuka. It's a rolling start, of course. And if you're at the back, you are... Well, actually, we'll talk about the back in a second. Uh, racing medium and racing hard tyres, both are required. Fuel usage times 2 and tyre wear time 7. Now, if you're starting in P20, quit the race. To be honest with you, it's a complete waste of time. You will start at Degna 2, so you will start over a half a lap behind. Um, I kind of got lucky here because I was the number 20 car and then um, Cyberman from South Africa decided to disconnect, which saved me and put me in P19. So that's where we're going to start for this race. Let's jump to that race then. Let's have a look at uh, who's in here, first of all, because I think you recognize somebody. And uh, yeah, let's kick off with the race and the lap guide. Here we are then at uh, the loading, as you can see, I am P20. And I, di I didn't even remember the Degna 2 thing, but then Quinton, 
Reminds me, if you didn't disconnect, you would have started at Degna 2. So that is still a thing, and they did say they had seen that this morning. So as I say, P20, just avoid it. Now look who is in here. We've got Mama's in here. He actually wished me good luck for the race. I don't know if that was uh, passive aggressiveness or just actually, you know, good luck. Uh, I'm a changed man. But we'll find out during this race, as always. Um, so as you say, we start P19. Happy days. We'll start before the last corner, which is what I was going to talk about in the race detail section. So I'm actually going to whack traction control on one here, just to be safe. The tyres are freezing. We have tyre wear, of course, which means tyre temps are involved. Better to be safe than sorry in the last corner rather than spin out and your race ruined and do the bit better starting at Degna 2 in that situation. Anyway, three we go. We can turn it off right about now. And we're going to go straight to the lap guide, as I say. Now, I'm going to warm my tyres up first of all. I'm going to be a bit slower in the first lap, so my braking will look slightly different to what I'm about to explain. However, Take it as guidance. These are the markers you're going to look for with these tyre combos in Group 3. So heading towards Turn 1, look for that piece of tarmac. If your car is really good on the brakes, as I say, Group 3, you can normally pick whatever you want. You're going to go for the later uh, of the markers there, but uh, in you go. You're just bouncing the car through Turn 1, uh, especially on Lap 1. You don't want to pull a TRL Lightning and go off and cause carnage uh, like you did at a World Tour event. Sorry, Lightning. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, through these corners, you just want to keep the car nice and stable. Avoid hitting the brake as much as you can. Remember, there's tyre wear in this race. The Audi especially, hugely bad on tyre wear. And it's not a car I would actually pick for the race, folks. Uh, in fact, you saw a few RCZs. That did go through my mind in picking the RCZ, to be honest with you. Uh, Quinton's in the Porsche. Um, I say GTR's at the top, and you'll see what happens with the GTRs later on. Heading towards Degna 1 then, 50 meter board is what you're looking for, obviously hard tyres, I'm braking a bit sooner, um, but uh, on medium tyres I'll be braking closer to that 50 meter board, through I go, and then I'm looking for the end of the curve basically, that's my marker, I use that as a reference, I'm braking before that of course, that's also my turn in marker as well, I know a couple of people have asked for turn ins, if you're turning in after that marker really, and you're over on the curb, you're going to spin out. So just be careful of that. So that's my marker to turn in as well. I turned in a bit later then just because I was carrying a little bit less speed. Now heading towards the hairpin, you're basically using the end of the curb as your reference here because you want to get straight and break. You don't want to be going any further past here because you're going to go too deep into the corner. I know you, you see me go deep all the time as I do here. Remember this is lap one, cold tyres, they're just warming up. That's a normal marker though. You turn, you straight, you'll break and you turn in and you're fine. Okay. Um, we're going to continue on now towards Spoon. Now, Spoon is our usual marker. You know what it is. On the right hand side, we've got a piece of tarmac. Just in using that as a reference point, really. Can't get taken out. It's always going to be there, unless uh, Gran Turismo decides to take it out for reasons unknown to science. Uh, but through we go and Spoon. Again, it's all about bouncing the car. You accelerate a little bit, and then you want to let off. Uh, some cars, you will want to dab the brake a little bit, but you're using, once again, the kerb here. If you are on the kerb, anywhere past that red and white curbing as it ends. You are off, folks. You are visiting Narnia. But through we go as uh, we continue on now. And uh, we're behind Azura in the Lexus. The Cuba in the RCZ. So shout out to you both. I know you feature quite a lot in these uh, daily race videos. As uh, up to the left-hander here of 130R. And you're just lifting at the 50 meter board, basically. You can cut quite a lot of the inside. In an MR car, it's going to get a bit oversteery. In an FR car, it's just going to be fine. It'll just handle itself beautifully through there. Just be careful on exit about running too wide there. And head towards the Casio Triangle, the chicane. Uh, basically, on the right-hand side, you've got that yellow line. I always use that yellow line as a reference. Uh, you might want to use the 100 meter boards as well, but I always use that. That's always been my reference here on Gran Turismo. Be careful of cutting the first chicane there. As you notice, uh, it sent me a little bit oversteery. I'd advise cutting the second part rather than the first part. And as you see, Quinton, um, Ponzi, and I think it was Poloff, uh, they all go in and they all change to the medium tyres after one lap. Now, this race is all about strategy. You don't want to get stuck in traffic. If you get stuck in traffic, you'll lose so much time. So that's their idea. So you want to pick a car with good tyres. As well as you're a look around the outside of Cuba, not going to work out. So we go, oh, thank you very much. We will steal that one. Up into P15 we go. So yes, this is all about strategy. Depending on when you want to pit. I saw people pitting on each and every lap. Okay, so Cuba pitted on the last lap in the RCZ. We're now pitting on this lap and nearly plebbing it into the pit. So 15.3 seconds is the time difference to the leader. What we'll do is we'll just measure that on our way out here. So 15.3 uh, looks like we're looking at 19 seconds-ish there in terms of the gap to the leader. So 19 seconds for your pit stop. You can work out gaps accordingly if you start near the front and you're on the medium tyres. 
something to look at as you go forward. Uh, there's Mamas! Hello, Mamas! So, I was actually quite glad to get past Mamas. I didn't want any situation to happen. I didn't actually spot Mamas and said hello until I edited this video. So, uh, through we go. And uh, we continue on. So, Italian up ahead in the Supra has a penalty. Cuba's catching him very quickly. Let's see what happens here. We're going to get into a good battle. As you see, some medium runners coming in on lap six. Some came in on lap five. It, it varies depending on the car, of course. Time seven tyre wear, quite extreme in the grand scheme bit here at Suzuka. So I back out of this because I was just like, uh, go trying to even attempt an additional overtake in there would have just been pure carnage. Pure carnage. Uh, just uh, discretion, the best part of valor there, I think is the saying, isn't it? So we continue on. We do pull away a little bit from Mamas up until this point where we did start to lose time with the fighting up ahead. But we're up into P13 so far. And heading in towards turn one again. And notice how I'm just trying to balance the car as best as I can. Trying to stop any oversteer. Uh, I'm in my brake balance, by the way. All brake balances are below, but in the Audi, I'm minus five to keep that stability as good as it can be. So through here, the Supra seemed extremely slow. So I was assuming they're on hard tyres. And I didn't mean to hit him there or her there. Uh, I was just struggling, you know, because I don't know their speed. Notice they had made a bit, bit of a mistake again. I'm... Losing so much time here. You see Mamos has gained four attempts through that section alone. Um, and I was aware of Mamos being there. You know, Mamos can have good and bad days. Uh, but I think today was a good day for Mamos. So, you know, a fair play to you, Mamos. And in towards the next turn we go. You see a lot of cars up ahead. So, there's a chance of us making some positions. Witchy up ahead as well. So, in towards the break-in zone we go. And uh, nowhere to launch it there, really. But coming out of th this corner, you're going to see the Super get a lot of wheel spin here. It gets lots of wheel spin. Now, we tapped them accidentally, and then I, I sort of figured maybe that tap caused them to get more oversteer. So I just back out of it. I'll let them continue on. I don't know if it was my fault or not, or whether I should have really let off. But, hey, I'm only racing for fun. It doesn't matter, really. Um, you know, I just felt like that little push may have just oversped the car a little bit in the tyres and just caused more of an issue. So we continue racing. We've lost a lot of time, of course, but uh, let's have a look what we can do then into the Casio Triangle. And uh, on the brakes we go. Now, I didn't want to go around the outside. It's kind of risky. As you can see there, they just hit the curb and bounced a bit further over. But we continue racing. So we're having quite a good race here. Now, I'll just talk about strategy. As I say, you want to pick a car which is good on tyres. The GTR seems very good. The Porsche we know is good. The Peugeot RCZ would be good as well. So they're three top choices and they are running very well in this race. So it's just something to think about. Uh, I see Zocca going full drift out and us as well. So we had to just slam on a little bit there to avoid the Supra once again. So really struggling here with the Supra. So I'm looking for a way to, pa to pass at this moment in time. I can see that struggling so much. Um, so I'm looking at each and every side of the car. Little tap there. Again, that, you know, that's nothing. That's absolutely nothing. There was a bit more like, ah, oh, come on, that was a bit of a runoff. But, you know, it's me getting a little bit frustrated. I want to pass. I'm losing so much time to cars ahead. Zocker's going full sideways there. So I'm just looking for a place. Where can I pass? Where can I pass? Here, the Supra is much faster than the Audi in a straight line. I have to make him pass in the corners. Uh, but if the car keeps getting oversteer, it's much bigger than it normally is anyway. So we have a good run out of Degna 2 here. So we're going to look down the inside of the Supra. Now, I was cautious because I know they tried to outbreak me last time. This time they don't. So we're going to try round the outside. So we're going to have some good racing here and a beautiful exit. For reasons unknown to science, my fuel thing came on. So I think my wheel may be on the way out, potentially. That's normally a sign with a Thrustmaster when it starts doing its own thing. It's on the way out. Hopefully not, but we will see. So they didn't show their nose here. Now, I wasn't sure what was going to happen. So I tried to brake a little bit later there. So I missed the apex a tiny bit, but we survived. Then we go full drift though here for reasons I don't know. Let's advance a bit further on then to the final lap as uh, we catch up to Zocca. And actually a big pack of cars up ahead. And Mamos is in this. Mamos is um, the white Porsche behind the GTR, the black GTR up ahead. And I think they have a good race to be fair. That's to say, you know, I will say Mamos does have a reputation. But when he has a good race, he can have a good race. And it's all good. So through we go. And uh, Zocca looking to try and get past this Evo. And the Evo is definitely on hard tights. This is the amalgamation. What a word to use for a weekly race guy, eh, folks? Uh, of medium and hard runners coming together at the very end. Um, so this is why we've got this big pack. And uh, I, as I say, I think this is a good week. Just because you can pick different cars and have different races. Um, strategy is critical in this one, though. You will have seen the leaders have absolutely dominated this from an early. Zocker gets it wrong into Degna 1 and Degna 2. Manages to stop the car there. It's a good recovery from Zocker. Uh, Zocker does stream leads as well. So do check out Zocker's YouTube channel if you want to catch streams very early on in the day. 
Um, he does stream them. But we're going to finish there in P12 uh, for us. I've not checked who's uh, got any live stream set up for tonight. So there will be a live stream there if you want to click that. There's another video there if you want to check that out. My logo's there if you want to subscribe. And if you did like this video, please do leave a like as well. It all helps and is good fun. I say I do hope you enjoyed it. You can see the final results there in terms of cars. Uh, have a good week, and I'll see you again in another video or live stream very soon.